So in the last unit, you know, we looked at ways to improve the photos and really get the best photographs that we can through some minor adjustments. But now that we've got some great photos, let's share them with our friends and family and people all around the world. Today we're going to look at four different ways to share photos electronically. The first thing we need to do is actually select a picture. So I'm going to use the picture of this tree. I'll minimize that back out. And the first way I'm going to share this is on Facebook. And iPhoto has built into it, down in the bottom right corner, a link to four different ways to share photos. This one we're going to share on Facebook. So I'm going to click Facebook. It pops up a window that says, Do you want to publish Trip to Oregon to Facebook? Photos viewable by everyone, friends of friends, or only friends. I'm going to choose only friends and I will click publish. And this will change to a screen that only has this trip to Oregon picture and you will see it uploading the file to Facebook. I can go back to my photos now while it's working on that. And I want to touch on one of the other ones here that we're really not going to dive into and that is the mobile me account. MobileMe is a service that Apple sells for $99 a year, so it is a fee-based service. That's why we're looking at Facebook and Flickr mainly today. So, it has uploaded to Facebook. I am going to switch to my web browser, and my Facebook page, I will click Refresh, and I should have the new photo that I just uploaded on my website. Very easy to get to Facebook. Now, the other big service for sharing is called Flickr, which is also a free service. Let's choose that same picture of the tree. We'll click on Flickr. And again, do you want to publish this picture? Photo, photos viewable by only you, your friends, your family, your friends and family, anyone. In this case, I'm going to choose only you. And how big do I want the size? I'm just going to leave it as the web size since I'm just letting people look at this on the web. Now I'll click publish. And again, it will take a few seconds for it to upload. We can see that here. Once it's completed, we'll switch over to the web browser. switch to the web browser. I'm going to click on Flickr and it's not showing yet but I do need to refresh the screen. And here I have my new picture that I just published. So once again very easy to upload pictures to both Facebook and Flickr. Let's go ahead and close out the web browser and go back to iPhoto. Now, that's great if you are connected to people on Flickr or Facebook and you want to share with them. But a lot of people we want to share photos with, we maybe just have their email addresses. So iPhoto has also made it very easy to email pictures to people. Let's select another photo and click on the email button. And the first thing we get to choose is how big we want the picture to be. It can either be large, which is a high quality picture, medium or small, or I can send the actual size, which is the full quality picture. You usually don't want to use actual size because it's going to be a large file to download, it's going to take too long, and really you're sending this for people to look at on their computers. Large or medium is usually fine for that. So we're going to leave it at large and it also shows me here my estimated size for the photo. At large it's about 414 kilobytes, so under half a megabyte, which isn't too bad as long as the people have a high-speed internet connection. Let's take a look at the change. If I change it to small, it's only 63 kilobytes. So if someone only has dial-up internet, I may want to choose sending in in the smaller size. Now a lot of people laugh when I say dial-up internet but realize half the people in the United States that have internet access only have dial-up connections. So don't be afraid to use that small size sometime if you're ever in question. Now we can also include the title of the picture. 
any descriptions that I've put in, and if I put in location information, it will send that as well. Now, once I have my settings chosen, I click Compose Message. It automatically resizes it, opens up my email program, and attaches the picture to the email. I type in the address and the message I want to send, and click Send, and my email is gone. Now, the last thing I want to look at is a slideshow. Now, in years of old, it was torture to people to pull out the slide projector and the screen and force them to watch a slideshow, especially of your vacation photos, which you may have taken hundreds of pictures of. iPhoto has actually made this kind of fun. I've chosen one photo that's in my vacation pictures, and I'm going to go down and click Slideshow. And I have some choices of the different themes. We're going to look at a couple of those. The first one I'm going to choose is a Shatter theme. And I can also choose what kind of music I want in the background. Uh, let's use Linus and Lucy from the Peanuts cartoons. And there's some settings you can choose too. You can play slides for a certain length of time. You can adjust a very specific seconds. We're going to keep it pretty short at five seconds each. You can even have the slideshow automatically adjust so it will fit to a song as well. So let's go ahead and click play here to see what the slideshow looks like. It automatically starts the music and has some really cool effects changing between pictures. Okay, now if I don't like that specific slideshow, I don't have to even exit out of it. If I hover towards the bottom with my pointer, it brings up the menu. I can click on the slide and it will give me some additional options. Let's do the scrapbook one this time. Let's change music. Let's go with Randy Newman's You've Got a Friend in Me. Let's leave the settings the same. Click play. And here you get the feeling kind of a look at looking at a real photo album. Okay, when you're done viewing it, simply press the escape key. That will stop your slideshow and take you back to iPhoto. So, now that we've gone through some of the ways to share, definitely get out there and share some of your photos you've taken with your friends and family. Next time, we're going to look at sharing photos, but actually doing hard copies of the photos, so you can actually hand somebody something.